Hello, and welcome to today's program, Visual Impairment in Children. Over 1 million children in the United States under the age of 18 are blind or visually impaired. This number is projected to rise in upcoming years with a disproportionate increase among minority populations. If caught early, many of these cases can be avoided. For others, vision rehabilitation services help to minimize the impact of visual impairment on children's development and daily activities. In today's program, we'll review common causes of visual impairment in children and how it affects their visual function and development. We'll also discuss some available services and technology. After completing this program, we hope that you will be able to identify common causes of visual impairment in children, understand the impact of visual impairment on children's development, learning, daily activities, and socialization, and discuss services and technology that help children with visual impairment maximize their abilities in daily activities. The process of seeing is complex and involves both the eyes and the brain. Any disruption to this process can result in a visual impairment. This is true for both adults and children. However, the causes and impact of visual impairment vary in children. In children, disruptions to the visual process may be caused by problems that occur before, during, or after birth. The problems may be inherited or caused by disease, trauma, or injury. The visual system can be damaged on the outer portion of the eye, the inner portion of the eye, or in the brain. Let's learn more about the causes of visual impairment in children. Infections outside of the eye, such as on the eyelid, can impact the ocular system and, in some cases, the brain. Damage to the optic nerve can occur from an increased eye pressure associated with congenital or infantile glaucoma that results from poor development of the eye's drainage system before birth, or from optic atrophy, which is a deterioration of the nerve fibers in the optic nerve. Eye conditions and syndromes can damage parts of the eyeball itself, such as congenital cataracts, which cause the eye's lens to become cloudy, retinopathy of prematurity, where underdeveloped blood vessels in the retina can cause it to bleed and detach from the back of the eye, and oculocutaneous albinism, in which the pigmentation in the iris and the retina is reduced. Injury to the brain can result from events such as oxygen deprivation, neonatal stroke, hemorrhage or bleeding, or head injury occurring after birth. Two common vision-threatening conditions in which vision loss in children can be avoided. Amblyopia is when one eye does not work properly with the brain and the vision in that eye is reduced. It is sometimes called lazy eye. As the child increasingly relies on the vision in the stronger eye, the vision in the weaker eye gets worse and worse. Amblyopia can be corrected by making the child use the weaker eye in order to strengthen it. This is done by patching the stronger eye or blurring the eyeglass lens in front of it. Because of undetected and untreated cases, however, amblyopia is estimated to be the cause of 25% of all cases of visual impairment in children. Strabismus is when the eyes do not look at the same place at the same time. It is sometimes called crossed eyes. Strabismus is treated with special eyeglasses, therapy, and sometimes eye muscle surgery. If left untreated, the brain will learn to ignore the image from the turned eye and result in permanently reduced vision or amblyopia. The type and severity of visual impairment resulting from any of these causes can vary, but visual symptoms commonly include overall blurred vision causing objects and surroundings to appear blurry, hazy, or out of focus, central, side, or multiple areas of visual field loss causing children to not see objects to the side or to bump into things while walking, reduced contrast sensitivity making it difficult to distinguish objects from their background, like light-colored letters on a light background, problems with fixation, making it difficult to maintain visual gaze on a single target. Double vision, causing one object to be seen as two. Photophobia, or light sensitivity, which can sometimes be severe and dangerous, especially when walking outside. Loss of depth perception, making it difficult to gauge how close or far away an object or another person is. And color vision deficiency, or reduced ability to distinguish various degrees of color. Vision is key to development from the time of birth. It is the primary way most infants and children gather information and learn about the world around them. For example, babies form attachment with their parent or primary caregiver by fixating on their face and getting visual feedback and positive reinforcement, like sharing a smile. As babies age, they begin to observe and become curious about the people and the things around them. This motivates them to reach, roll over, and eventually crawl, and walk, 
in order to get to something, like a toy. But what if the baby has poor vision or no vision at all? Many babies with visual impairment do not form the same type of early attachment with their parent or caregiver. They aren't able to learn by mimicking behaviors and don't have the visual incentive to reach for objects around them. This often causes delays in crawling and walking, in development of hand-eye coordination, and in how the children interact with others. The good news is that, with guidance, most children can reach the same developmental milestones as sighted children. It just takes a little longer. Next, let's play a short video of a visually impaired baby wrongly diagnosed with infantile autism. Specifically, this video shows the baby's interaction with her mother before and after eyeglasses are placed on her face. Now that we've explored an example of misdiagnosed infantile autism, let's learn how visual impairment affects children. As children mature to school age, visual impairment further impacts learning, independence in daily activities, reading and communication, and the ability to form personal connections. Children with sight learn how to do everyday activities, such as eating, dressing, grooming, and toileting on their own, mostly by observing and copying the actions of those around them and by experimenting with objects in their environment. Children with visual impairment, on the other hand, often must be explicitly taught the function of objects. For example, learning that a coffee mug, a glass, and a water bottle all look and feel slightly different, but they have the same function. They also need to learn daily skills by using their other senses, mainly touch and hearing. For example, sighted children can see the food on their plate and learn to pick it up with eating utensils by mimicking others' behavior and with practice. Without the benefit of the same visual cues, children with visual impairment may need to be told what the utensils are used for. They may need to be deliberately taught, with hand-over-hand -hand guidance, how to hold spoons and forks, and how to locate food on a plate, scoop it up, and bring it to their mouth. Similarly, think of how young children learn to wash their hands or brush their teeth. They see how to use soap, hold and put paste on the toothbrush, and turn the water on and off by watching parents or older siblings. Children with visual impairment, however, need verbal descriptions to understand how the toothbrush is used. They may need hands-on guidance and repetition on how to operate water faucets or how to put toothpaste on the brush using their fingers as a guide. Visual impairment, whether it's mild or severe, impacts children's ability to learn, to read, and to participate in regular classroom activities. If not addressed, this may keep them from reaching their full academic potential. Imagine trying to read if you cannot see the letters clearly, or if you can't keep your gaze focused on one letter or word, or if you aren't able to track words from one end of a sentence to the other. Consider the number of school lessons that revolve around using vision. Virtually every subject, such as English, math, spelling, and geography, requires reading or writing on a page, blackboard, or tablet. As a result, students with visual impairment, especially those with an impairment that have not been diagnosed, are too often misdiagnosed as having a reading disability. Visual impairment also impacts the development of basic social skills. Children with sight learn socialization through interactions and communication with other people. This includes learning to interpret other people's body language, facial expressions, and visual feedback. Think about having a conversation with another person. If you're talking and they react with a frown and look away from you, that nonverbal feedback is much different than if they are smiling and nodding their head. Children with visual impairment may not be able to see and return this type of nonverbal visual feedback. They are unable to make eye contact or judge how far away someone is standing in front of them. This can make it difficult to form connections with others. Other people often mistakenly think they are disinterested or unapproachable.
Low vision services and technology help children make the best use of their existing vision. A team of low vision professionals work to ensure that children with visual impairment have access to the same opportunities as children who are sighted and encourage them to reach their full potential. Let's review examples of services, supports, and technologies for children with visual impairment. In a low vision evaluation, the eye doctor uses specialized tools and charts to assess how well children can see. Depending on the child's age and level of cognition, the charts may have contrasting lines or symbols instead of the letters and number charts typically used in adult vision exams. Based on the results, the doctor may recommend special glasses, optical devices, and additional services for both children and their parents. Families are a key part of the care team for children with visual impairment. Therapists and counselors provide education, share techniques and strategies, and help parents learn to advocate for services for their child. Individuals and family counseling and support groups are helpful in their adjustment, many of which are offered as telesupport groups, such as Lighthouse Guild's Parent Telesupport Network. Orientation and Mobility Instructors, or O&Ms, work with children on how to position themselves to their environment and to navigate safely from one place to another. This may include using a white cane, using wayfinding techniques, and the guide technique for walking with another person. O&Ms also make recommendations to parents and teachers, such as tips for making the home and classroom easier for children with visual impairment to navigate. For example, making sure there is enough light and that lighting levels are uniform from room to room, removing trip hazards such as scatter rugs, painting door frames a contrasting color to the wall, and marking stairs with non-skid contrasting strips. Teachers of the visually impaired and occupational therapists consult with teachers and parents to support the growth and success of children with visual impairment in school. They assess their use of vision and how vision loss is impacting their learning, and they recommend ways to address their individual needs. This can range from training children to use assistive devices and technology for reading or writing print, to teaching how to read or write braille, to giving simple tips to the classroom teacher to make sure children with visual impairment can integrate into classroom activities. For example, seating them closer to the board, decorating the classroom with large print letters and pictures, creating displays such as the classroom calendar using tactile or raised materials, and helping other students understand vision loss and how they can best interact with children who are visually impaired. Next, let's discover an example of a student using a light box to practice tracing in preparation for writing letters. Okay, so let's work on your handwriting. Can you open the marker for me? Okay, we are going to trace the line. Can you bring the girl to her ice cream? Go to the ice cream. Good job. Okay, okay trace the double lines. Go ahead. Double lines. Can you bring the dog? To his bone, the dog to his bone. Good job. So let's bring the bird to his nest. Trace the curved forward. line. Let's try that again, okay, Franklin? Stay on the line really good. There you go. Technology is all around us and impacts almost every aspect of our lives. Children with visual impairment may learn to use everyday technology, such as a smartphone, as well as more specialized assistive technology. Technology commonly used by school-aged children includes a calculator with large print or voice output for working on math problems, a handheld electronic video magnifier to read short pieces of text, adaptive computer equipment and software with magnification, screen reading or voice input for reading and writing, accessibility options on tablets and smartphones, a growing selection of software applications for reading, accessing electronic information, identifying objects, navigation, and more, and, for older children, more advanced assistive technology, such as wearable smart glasses for reading. There are also audiobook libraries, such as Bookshare, which has almost 1 million books available for free to people who are visually impaired. Today, 
We have taken a brief look at the causes and impacts of visual impairment in children and some of the services that can make a lasting difference in their lives. We hope this gives you a better understanding of childhood visual impairment and how organizations can help. Thank you. If you are finished, you may close this program window.